Hey everybody, thanks for watching. And uh, just a quick update on Merkaba Academy. The new site and the new app will launch on Christmas Day. Uh, there will be two separate apps for iOS. You will have Merkaba Academy and Merkaba Academy Pro app. And the Pro app will be for entrepreneurs and people who are investors in stocks. This app will have a lot of different options for you guys, for you to grow your business and also invest. You will get a lot of stock tips and I will definitely guide you guys along with some other um, things to guide you guys to help you make the right decisions in what stocks you should invest and why you should invest in them and also give you more uh, information to what you know Yahoo gives you guys. We talked about Yahoo Finance in the video. So definitely stay tuned. Christmas Day, it will launch. I will launch a video on that day, on Christmas Day, as well as the new site, Merkaba Academy site. The entire new site will be up. The new apps will launch. And uh, it's going to be great. I'm so glad and excited to finally get this stuff done. We got everything pushed through, but we're going to launch on Christmas Day and it's going to be an amazing new site and the app is going to be great. If you're an entrepreneur, if you're a person who, are, who is investing, not just in stocks, but in some other things, as you will see uh, when it comes and I'll get into all that stuff around that time, uh, you will see the many options that you will have that will help you out. Things that I have personally used and still use that will help you grow your company and help you really grow stock wise. So we're going to get into some new stuff in stock market three, which is coming soon and really touch on how, you know, we're going to take this information we talked about, take those stocks we talk about and how to apply it to uh, the things that the app is going to offer. So it's going to be great. You guys are going to love this. And uh, apologies for how long it took, but, you know, it's worth the time. It's going to be worth the wait. And it's so much, especially if you're an entrepreneur, there's so much information I want to give you guys that you have no clue about. Uh, grant money, stuff you qualify for if you have your LLC and your business license. Um, that's a lot of you guys who probably could have got PUA money for your business. Um, the PPP loans and stuff like that. It's a lot of little things that you don't understand and you can get to help you with your business. And um, they're not going to tell you this stuff. So we're going to get into all that because you're entitled to a lot of money by you having your, you know, business license and LLC. And there's a lot of grants out there, depending on the type of business you have, it's going to really help you grow your business. Like I have mostly online companies and I've received just so much uh, over the years in doing what I do. So um, stay tuned for that. It's a lot. So now because of this, I know you guys have been asking and been on my top about it. A lot of you guys wanted to take advantage of the Never pay again, the membership for Merkaba Academy. So I will al allow, because we have time now, 200 more people. That's it. 200 more people. It'll be first come, first serve. It's open right now, available right now for you to take advantage of Never Pay Again membership and um, Merkaba Academy and Merkaba Academy Pro. If you already have membership, you will automatically have Merkaba Academy Pro. Merkaba Academy Pro, the app will cost money, but if you are a Lifetime member or never pay again member, you won't have to pay. You'll get an email about it and you'll be able to download the app for free. It's only going to be like $2.99 anyway. But um, for pro members, if you're a you know, business owner or what have you, it's going to be 3 bucks if you're not a, a member. So, but you want to have the Mercable Academy, you know, never pay again membership to have access to all those options. All this stuff is going to make sense soon. That's why it took so long because it's tedious. But, um, Definitely take advantage for the people who ask if you want to take advantage of the Never Pay Again membership. It's available right now. There are different pay, uh, payment options. Also, if you are one of the people who bought the uh, digital downloads that I just offered, the Merkaba catalog, you will not have to pay for a price. You will see on the website, it's a, it's a separate price for you guys. So you don't have to pay for a price if you guys want to take advantage because it comes with those downloads. So I don't want you to have to pay for them again. You already got them. So it's a separate price. Please, if you did not buy it, do not click that link for the lower price because what's going to happen is you're not going to get anything. and It's going to be two weeks before you get a refund. So don't do it to yourself. Just pay for, you know, the one you're supposed to pay for. But um, take advantage of this. Also, <laughs> for the people who want to get the Merkaba catalog, it's available for this week. Again, I kept it up for a minute. Trying to help you all out. Take advantage. It's there. It's still up there right now. Take advantage before it's gone. Because it's going to be gone. Um, as I said, there's a lot coming uh, for everybody who took advantage of, who takes advantage of. They never pay again. There are two, maybe three new videos coming this week. So 
uh, stock market three will be coming. So that's going to be 89 bucks. So there you go. You get it for free when you sign up anyway. Even if you get the, um, the never pay again membership, you'll get that as well as the, uh, new video that's coming on, um, the law of attraction and have coming up. A lot of people asking about it. It's a really good video. You're going to want to see it, but I tie in so much of what we talked about in the sole purpose in a couple of videos and this law of attraction video. I'm trying to speed this up. Excuse me for speaking fast, but, um, it's late, but, um, we're going to get into this video, but, uh, I want you guys to really take advantage of this. Like, trust me, you're not going to want you. You're not going to want to be left behind when this thing launches. If you are serious about business and stock investing, if you're looking to really get out of the rat race and grow, this is how you're going to do it. So I showed you guys in stock market how I've done it, how I'm living, and you can get there too. But I have only recently come into the information uh, about how much we, we get, how much we qualify for, and things that we can get as business owners. And how when, okay, we, we get on these politicians a lot, but what they didn't tell you is there, there was so much money allocated for minority business owners. And they know that we're not smart enough to take advantage of this stuff. They know we're not going to know. That's why, you know, with the whole PUA scam that was happening over the summer, a lot of people had no clue. All I had to do was basically sign up on your own, but they were so lost and they paying people a thousand bucks to basically sign up for them. And they can just, they could have just done it on their own. The problem was answering the questions and this was a problem and people don't understand that it's so many things like this that you qualify for and this money that's just out there for you to grow your business and for you to really get off the ground when i opened my recording studio in philly it was all grant money it's so much you qualify for so we're going to get into all this and the reason why i'm waiting saving it for the app is because like i said i want serious people only so if you are a never pay again member you'll get all that um but uh yeah, take advantage of everything, people. Like, get on this stuff. It's going to stop. It's not going to last forever. I'm trying to work in as many people as possible. I'll be complaining and bitching about prices. And when I lower it, nobody takes advantage. Take advantage to everybody who has. I appreciate you guys. You made a smart move. So now, I want to get into this video. And like I said, been getting into a lot of the biblical information. And a lot of you guys have been contacting me about it. And I recently, you know, got into... Oh, I'm always getting into base with people. I, I, I do so to educate people, but at the same time, um, it's good to get this information out and to put it in people's head about what they think about their religion. So a lot of the things you will run into when a lot of people, we talked about this, so it's weird that I ran into it, is when we're talking about the Jews, as I talked about with no Jews existing before the fourth century BCE. There is absolutely no proof. And then you'll have people that pop out of nowhere. Well, wait a minute. What about the, the, uh, this Stella or this Stella? Or what about the, um, Jehoash or Jehoachin, uh, Stella or the reliefs and so on and so forth or the Tell Dan Stella and all this is always an artifact. It's always a shard or pottery or a fragment of a manuscript to where you know, they want to put these words in there. And one of the things you got to realize is, remember, when they made the Bible, they took ancient things and put it in the Bible. So case in point, if you go to Mesopotamia uh, or if you go to, um, you know, the Syrians, Syrian Empire and where the Jews were supposed to have been traveling to and so on and so forth when the Greeks was running around doing the real conquest and then, you know, supposedly just so happens that the Jews were being captive in uh, Babylonia. So, you know, bullshit. But all they had to do was they already knew about these stellas. They already had these artifacts and they understood the names that was already on there. And they put these names in the Bible. That happened in a lot of cases. You got to understand that. So they know later on, even if they just modified a word or added something to an inscription, uh, and the carving on the Stella that they'd be able to change it or it would, or be able to make it say something that it doesn't say. And this is what they did. There's a lot of unfinished Stellies out there. There's a lot of carvings out there that are unfinished. All you have to do is go and take this square shaped carving. I've seen a lot of them in the museums I've been to and just go ahead. Anybody can just take a chisel and go ahead and chisel in whatever they want to chisel in. And then present it as information. And then if everybody's in on it, nobody's the wiser. 
So this is what has been happening. So you have to understand, we don't have any agreed upon proof, 100% proof that Jews existed before the 4th century BCE. Now, again, you're going to have people bring up these so-called artifacts and what they don't understand because they're not looking critically at their information. They don't understand that many of these have already been proven to be forgeries. Not none of them, not one. There is not one Jewish artifact that predates the fourth century BCE that has been proven 100% to be true. Every single one of them is suspect. Plain and simple. There isn't one. So you have to think about that. So we have in the case with the Jehoash um, tablets, and it's already on record that they have been forging many tablets. And then a lot of these researchers will tell you there's a lot of tablets. They won't say which ones, but there's a lot of artifacts that's in museums and in private hands that are complete forgeries. So in the case of the Jeho Jehoash tablets, you have a Golan. So Golan and it's not just him. It's many other archaeologists and researchers out there who've been who's been faking this stuff. But they basically found out that he was in possession of a forged um, tablet that supposedly had the, the inscription of Jehoash. So they, you know, put out a search warrant for his house. They went in there and they found, you know, pictures of him next to the tablet. They didn't find it the exact tablet yet, but they found pictures of him next to the tablet. And they found other uh, tools and stuff like that that led them to believe that they was, you know, making forgeries. So he immediately took a, a deal to where he would have immunity if he testified. Now, unbeknownst to him, they had already found his storage locker where, you know, when they got in there, they found the tablets. They found a whole bunch of other artifacts and they found all the tools and the proof that they were forging these artifacts. This is all public. You can go look it up. And uh, one of the people who they got in connection with the whole thing already admitted to them forging the Jehoash tablet. So it's already admitted that it's forgery. He came clean. The stuff is forgery. The problem is along the way, somehow the, you know, investigation, they messed up the evidence or something like that. Or in court, for some reason, they said they couldn't prove 100 percent that he forged, you know, the tablet. So they set a commission up and some scientists and put them together to go ahead and basically go through the artifact to see if it was real. And they determined the Israel Antiquities Authority determined that it's a modern day forgery. So not just that, you know, it's what 18 cases. I think they found that they were charged with forgery, him and some other uh, researchers. It was errors in spelling and Everything that was indicative of, you know, forgery by somebody who wasn't 100 uh, percent sure what they was doing. But it was proof and they found lots of proof, as you can see here, uh, that they were faking these these stellies. And, you know, I showed you guys, as I keep saying, this stuff goes back to the Greeks. Now I'm going to read here. It says in 2002, an ancient limestone box called the James Ossuary was trumpeted on the world's front pages as the first material evidence of the existence of Jesus Christ. Today, it is exhibit number one in a forgery trial involving millions of dollars worth of high-end biblical era relics, some of which literally rewrote Near Eastern history and which could lead to the incarceration of some very wealthy men and embarrassed major international institutions, including the, the British Museum and South Bays. So like I said, this stuff has been going on for a long time. They're not going to show you this on your local news. If you follow this stuff, you've seen this already. You understand what's going on. These are forgeries. They've been doing this for a long time. Things that are in museums are forgeries. Set in Israel with its 30,000 archaeological digs cramming with biblical era artifacts and full of colorful characters, scholars, evangelicals, detectives, and millionaire collectors, Unholy Business tells the incredible story of what the Israel authorities have called the fraud of the century. It takes readers into the murky world of Holy Land relic dealing. From the back alleys of Jerusalem's Old City to New York's Fifth Avenue and reveals biblical archaeology as it is pulled apart by religious believers on one side and scientists on the other. Again, this stuff has been going on for years. These are forgeries. None of these relics that you will ever see that's talking about Jews existing before the 4th century BCE, and I don't think they existed that long, uh, to be honest. 
forgeries, fakes, phonies, none of them are agreed upon 100%. So the only people we could find besides the ancient Egyptians who was making stellas back then was the Greeks. And I showed you guys when I was in a car museum, you know, the Greek statues, the stellas that they, that they made. And it's clear as day, you know, and, you know, of course, the Assyrians had stellas, the Babylonians and Assyrians had stellas as well. But it's clear as day what happened, you know, that the Greeks were faking this stuff. And it was it was obviously trying to push off uh, Judaism, the Hebrews, as them being established before the fourth century. So when I did the video on this in Greek mythology three, when we got into the whole thing with um, Hecateus and uh, Diodorus Siculus, Hecateus is who everybody goes back to. Well, Diodorus Siculus, you know, basically paraphrasing Hecateus and giving us his information. That doesn't stop with anybody. That's Every single scholar and researcher goes back to that point because that's the beginning. If you're going to try to go to the beginning of where all the information began and started from, you're going to run into Diodorus, you know, basically quoting Hecateus as I broke all that down. There's nobody else. So the first person who is supposedly mentioning, mentioning the Jews and understand that they only uh, use Hecateus because of how old he is. They only we don't even know if Hecateus existed. They're using him to say, and this is what they're trying to push. If you understand how this thing is working, they're just using him because I didn't really make this clear in the video. They're using him as a way of saying they must have existed because he knew about them. Everybody understands you're not going to find any proof, but how you get around it, you just use a person that's that existed during the time you're trying to put them in there and say, well, he was researching them. You understand what I'm saying? So since this man was born, you know, in the sixth century and, you know, he's doing his researches in you know, 500 BCE and he's mentioning Jews, then obviously the Jews must have had existed during this time. Understand? But we can't prove that. And this is what Theodorus was doing the research on. Like, I'm just, you know, I'm quoting this guy. I'm paraphrasing him. I don't believe him because there's no proof. And even if you want to believe him, he's basically saying, well, I never seen any Jews. It still hurt the story. Oh, I got the story about the Jews from the Egyptians, which none of that makes sense. It don't fit with everything else. So understand when, when Diodorus is putting out this information, he's basically saying, yo, I can't find nothing on these people evil. This is the oldest information that we get. And even he's saying that, you know, I, I never spoke to any Jews and he met any Jews. It's suspect. But the fact that this dude existed, you know, in the, in the sixth century, then they could say, well, if he was talking about them in the, in the sixth century, then obviously they must have existed before the fourth century BCE. So understand that it's all bullshit. The fact is this, there's no proof. A shard, a stella, a rock, none of that is indicative of any other civilization we find across the planet that has concrete proof of the existence of their people. So if we go into ancient China, you know, ancient Africa, you know, ancient America, what have you, we're going to find the same situation. We're going to find mass graves. We're going to find bodies. We're going to find civilizations and ruins. We're going to find pottery. We're going to find writings. We're going to find other civilizations and people who spoke about those civilizations. There's a hundred percent proof that these people existed and there's no doubt. Now, do scholars and researchers agree on everything about the ancient Egyptians? No, but that usually has to do that usually has to do with dating and dynasty, plain and simple. Either, well, we don't know what dynasty this was. We don't agree on it. We don't know what date this was. We don't agree on it. But there's never a question that it belongs to the ancient Egyptians or the ancient Greeks. We know these people existed during this time. The Jews is the only civilization we can't say that about. Even if you go back to civilizations that disappeared, these people who spoke about them. We know the Nook completely just disappeared, but other civilizations spoke about them. We know about the Mayans or the Olmeca, but have you disappeared? Other civilizations spoke about them. We find bodies, well, in some cases, but we find so many artifacts that is, you know, nonstop, you know, no doubt. So we don't find a shard or we don't find a rock or we don't find a suspect inscription. Understand when these people talk about the Tell Dan Stella, which you can read right here, why it's suspect and they don't agree on the writing. They don't agree on, agree on the carving. It's the same thing with the Marion Batastelli, which as you can see here, I've been, I've seen them all. 
I've spoken to the archaeologists. I've spoken to researchers. I've spoken to even the um, the uh, the Arab curators or what have you. And as I showed you guys in the one photo right here, where he's showing me where they came in and took the darkness, the skin off of the um, Egyptians and many of the temples. So I'm talking to these people and they're telling me they didn't want to be on camera saying what they was telling me. But I've done the research. I've been there. You don't have to believe me. Don't care. But I've talked to these guys and they would tell you straight up the Greeks came in there and changed shit. He told me that in almost every single tomb you go into, the skin on the Egyptians was pitch black. And we still find that today. And they diluted it. You know, you see the pictures. They basically took it from complete blackness and made it like brown or try to make it just like the color of the stone. All of this is try to is to try to give validity to the Arabs being there instead of it, you know, being black. Because if it's black, there's only one people it could be. Now you still find some. This is why they take so long to basically uh announce a new finding when they find a new tomb. You know, they take a while because they gotta go in there and clean shit up. And this is what this is what they've been doing. And um, you know, he told me this in confidence. So it's one of the things that we already know. But you have to understand, there's no proof. You're not going to find any. There's nothing we're going to find that's going to prove that these people existed. It's all suspect. Everything points to the Greeks. So in my videos, when I'm talking about this, this is what I mean. People didn't exist. So you had the Greeks, you know, give us the Septuagint in Greek. We don't have one in Hebrew that predates the Septuagint Greek. New Testament written in Greek. It's just that simple. So everything is pointing to them. And if you have people who can't fathom this, but it's just clear as day. There's no other people who existed around this time that could fit the Jews, but the Greeks. If you know Greek history and you read the Old Testament, there's only one people that follow that scenario. And I gave you guys the example where Alexander, Alexander and Tyre or Tyrus, when the Bible was talking about it with Nebuchadnezzar, they give you a whole different story, but the story is similar to what happened in real life with, with Alexander and the Causeway. The Causeway is still there, still named after Alexander. Clearly, that's where they got the stories. Now, who are we talking about here? The Greeks. So if, the, if we have a Greek history, a real Greek historical thing that happened that we can prove, and then we find it in the Bible basically disguised as a different story in the same place, it's common sense. You know, who gave you the story? And as I've shown you guys in the video, this is uh, Ancient History Volume 1, what I'm talking about. When you go there, you still see the Egyptian inscriptions. And as I told you guys, the land, as you know, that we call Israel today was once part of the Egyptian Empire. We were there. So you have to understand real history, real antiquity, and then really look. These people are not being critical. A shard, a stone, or what have you is no proof of the existence of an entire people that, you know, seemingly, you know, basically didn't exist during the time they say, you know, the Bible says they existed. And conveniently, when we have proof that the Greeks are running around conquering, in, you know, real history, they just so happen to be captive in, you know, Babylonia, what have you, but there's no proof of that. It's no proof. It, it's, it's just crazy. Everything has been set up to fit you know, uh, what they're lacking, you know, as far as th them being where they're supposed to be in time and they're not there. And not just that, we don't find anything. We don't find nothing. The little stuff we do find is never agreed upon. So understand this. When you are debating with these people and talking with these people, they're going to give you the rundown of this stuff. Oh, of course they exist there. We have this, we have, and none of it is proven. None of it. Not one thing. The Shroud of Turin, the Jesus is bullshit. It's not proven. The Tomb of Jesus, not proven. And, and that's even worse if you, you don't want to prove that. If it's a Tomb of Jesus, then he ain't no, you know, risen savior or what have you. None of that stuff never happened. And it's so much that people really look to thinking that it's real. People still think that they found Noah's Ark. They didn't find Noah's Ark that's proven to be false. You know, Noah's Ark found in Turkey. They already came forth and said that it was you know, a hoax. Um, the one of the chariot wheels from the uh, pharaoh when you know they had the Red Sea fall on them. It's supposed to be in, in the Red Sea. That's false. <laughs> it's so much that's already been proven false, but people are not looking for the truth. They want the fairy tale story, and um, it's not there. So again, this stuff is 
never been proven to be true. You have absolutely no proof that these people existed before the fourth century BCE. There's nothing. I've been looking for over 20 years nonstop. I've done all the research. I've been to these places in the Bible, basically every country in the Bible I've been to. There's nothing. You know, when you go to Golgotha, it's a fucking tourist attraction. This is why they don't want you to record there or take pictures there when you're there for those people who've been there. Now to record shit. It's it's a joke. Like, come on. And it's it's nothing. There's nothing. This is why the Bible requires faith and belief. There's no proof. There's people out there telling you that Jesus is proven to exist and that the Bible has been proven and that we have historical evidence beyond a reason. We don't. We don't have nothing that's been concrete proven, period. And then when you find stuff, what you're going to find is it's not proven. And you're going to have scholars who think it's real and scholars who think it's fake. Nobody's ever in agreement on it. So, again, it's, that means it's not proven beyond a shadow of a doubt. And um, this is the case. You know, go to the Cairo Museum, you go to the British Museum, it's the same shit, plain and simple. So, you know, you got to look for these things and, you know, figure out the truth for yourself. But make sure that you are going through and doing your research and looking before you just come out of nowhere and say that something is real when it's not. So you're going to run into this debating with these people or doing your research. And some of them are going to stump you because you're not going to find 100 percent concrete information about a lot of these stones but make sure when you're doing your research you look in the books section if you're a person that's using google you got to really know how to use google when you're doing your research make sure you click on the books even if you type in a word like a keyword click on books and it'll usually pop up uh, a book that this stuff is mentioned in and just try to find the uh for and against you know some of them will have like you know evidence and then i'll have what you know People are refuting it or what have you in a lot of books, but you're going to find information if you really want to. And if you're looking and in many cases, like I said, you don't even have to waste your time with none of this. It's not proven and no steli or what have you is going to be concrete proof of the existence of these people or nor is it going to prove that the Bible is true. It's just, you know, that simple. So thank you guys for <laughs> Listening to me ramble on this for a while, but um, appreciate you guys watching. Again, make sure you guys take advantage of these sales and get on it and everything. We have new videos coming this week. Uh, I appreciate you guys for getting on this. So again, you know this this is going to launch on Christmas Day. Um, our video is going to launch on Christmas Day. We're going to get into the site and everything like that. Get into the apps and really, um, I'm going to try to get as many. Uh, it's because it's going to be a lot of information. I don't want to overwhelm business owners, but you'll see how the section is structured for your business and how information will just basically be fed to you. You'll get alerts, you know, so when you do get that, make sure you turn on a notification because this, there could be, you know, the difference between making money fast or, or losing out. But you'll get alerts that's unique to your business and unique to, you know, what you're investing in. You'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. And you have to make sure you you take advantage of these things. We try to put as much in as I can, but I want to I don't want to overwhelm you guys. If you are serious about business, make sure you get your business license, get your LLC out the way. Uh, if you're if you don't have money, this is another thing I got to put this out there. I should have said this at the beginning of the video, but if you made it to the end, then lucky for you. But you probably already know this. Probably already know this. Uh, if you don't have money, if you broke and you're just trying to start a business. If you have a really good idea, if, if this is something you really want to do, make sure you write out your business plan. You're going to need that. Same thing if you're trying to get grant money. You're going to need your business plan and you're going to need a grant proposal. Now, every funding source or company that's providing grants has, they have different ways they want their grant proposal. But if you do your grant proposal right, there's ways to tweak it to where it works. Like I said, I got grants for I got many grants. I get grants all the time. I ain't going to lie because I know how to do them. But I'm going to go through this and help you guys out with that. But there's there's a way when you do your grant proposal that, you know, you know it's going to be on your computer. You just go in there and tweak things. They're really anal about prices, you know, when you run it down your prices for, because they're going to want costs for everything. They want everything. It's got to be meticulous. I don't think they go through all that, but they still want it and you don't want to be left hanging. But um, 
start getting on this stuff now because I'm going to hit you guys with a lot of information. There will be videos, so it'll, it'll be easier. But um, if you're trying to start a business or if you're in a business right now and you're stuck, you don't know where to go, what have you, this is what you want to do. You want to make sure you have that business plan ready. Get the legal stuff out the way. Go online and look up grant proposals. Um, I'm going to have some examples on the site. And um, you know, depending on what you're trying to do, it's a lot you qualify for. So, again, we'll get into all this. Thank you guys for taking the time to watch. Thanks to everybody who's been supporting and everything like that. Um, again, like, you know, watch your finances, people. Seriously, I have a lot of people, you know, run into uh, PayPal asking for their money back from, you know, the split pay. There's a lot of people who made the first payment on the split pay, didn't make the second payment, and they're trying to, you know, people people be scamming me. I'm telling you, it's crazy what I got to go through. People who downloaded the Merkaba catalog trying to ask for their money back. It's crazy. So if you broke, if you can't afford none of it, don't try it because don't, don't run to PayPal trying to get your money back, you know, two months later. I mean, it's just crazy. Um... Also, if you have any issue, don't go to PayPal at all. Send me an email. If you don't get me on email, go to my Instagram, go in the comment section and just, hey, you know, check your inbox, something. Don't go to PayPal because you're just going to hold yourself up for a couple of weeks. Plain and simple. If it's a problem, make sure you just inbox me, uh, the real merkable at gmail.com or inbox me on, um, my IG on Instagram or what have you. I always check my Instagram on it every single day. So do that. Don't run to PayPal. Like it's just going to be a waste of time. But thanks for taking time to watch. <laughs> See you guys next video.